I don't think that's something that I have to have. And I think when we're looking at women today or young women or any women that if they don't want particular things that we're judging them on that and we're condemning them on those thought processes. But what if that's not, what if I wasn't the little girl that grew up believing in Prince Charming galloping up on a horse to gallop me away? What if I wanted to get the horse myself and gallop away? <laughs> you know, does that make me a bad person? Does that make me not in tune to who I want to be as a woman? I don't think so. Um, so because I was brought up by so many women who were, who did teach me specifically, I'm saying this very personally, um, that to have your own mind and to have your own opinion, um, that doesn't mean that you didn't, that I didn't have any de wanting that other level relationship with the other. Um, but I also want to have my own hopes and dreams. And sometimes those can get derailed, um, and in, for many facets of reasons. But what I love about my lineage is that we call them the Skinner women because my last name is Skinner. So I met most of the Skinner women and they're their, they were their own entity. You know, each one had its own personality. No one was the same. And that's what I love about that because we're not the same. You know, no one woman is the same. I'm not trying to be you and I don't want you to be me. I want you to be you loving you. And so that's how I look at it. And that's how I've been brought up. And I love that. And I think I've gained a more respect for it as I have matured um, into these 50 plus years. And, and I love it. I think it has made me to have a self-reflection of they did a good job of teaching us our independence, not lack of family and not lack of owning who we are and wanting to have some sense of, of foundation, not so independent that you know, nobody can be around you. But just that moment of you look in the mirror and say, what do you want? You know, no one should be, no other person should have that control over you and your mind to be able to tell you what you cannot do. Those women did it. They didn't let nobody stop them. They didn't let nobody hold them down. If they wanted to do it, it didn't even matter their age. You know, my great grandmother at the age of 95 got on the plane for the very first time. So she just wanted to leave. Houston, she's like, I'm done, and left. <laughs> Didn't come back. <laughs> and so I've always admired that, you know, if they wanted to, I have an aunt just recently that faced her fear and wanted to go to Italy. She had been talking about it for a thousand years. She woke up and did it. She's 80. Come on. So I love the challenge that it has brought to just me as a woman being independent. And, I, and I've said this even to my own daughter, go do you boo, don't let nobody stop you. And I think we can get to where we let fears and societal norms or other people's opinion, other people's opinions, other people's opinions, stop us from what that inner voice is telling us to do. And I think fear just locks us down. And so as I face my own life cycles of fear challenges, which I'm still doing today as, as we speak, it's a challenge because it's scary. You don't, know, you don't know on the other side of the unknown, but I'm challenging myself to face those unknowns because they're coming anyway. I mean, no one day is known. Um, even if you go to work to the same place every day, you don't know what's gonna happen. So why not take an opportunity as women, we're, in a, we're now in an influx as you as we can tell every day in social media any media that it's a challenge now to understand what does that mean to be that woman of today um and i think that's something that we all have to do an introspection about agreed so you mentioned in, uh earlier on what you were just saying there about um family or maybe not being married at a certain age a certain stage uh and as you closed out at the end of that you were talking about you know trying what is it what does it mean to be a woman in this day and time and in this age? And obviously what I wanted to kind of get into a little bit is about um, being a mother, you know, bearing children, you know, and that I think uh, obviously at one point in time was kind of the definition of, you know, mm -hmm. this, this is the woman's role, that kind of thing. Yeah. And obviously that has evolved. Um, do you see that as being a, the what kind of where the line is of, you know, if, if I, bringing a family and I have children and therefore I am woman or is it more than that in this day and time? I think that's a personal choice um, at this 
point before you were limited. You know, there were many times you were limited if you wanted to have a child or not have a child. Um, some of us are teenage mothers. I was one. Um, and so there's just, I think the gift of today, I'm going to do it in a positive way. I think the gift of today, you have that choice if you want to be a mother. What I don't tend to like is that if you don't want to be one, you're judged. And the key word to me in this whole message today is judging. What I want to do with my life is mine. What you want to do with yours is yours. So if you choose to want to be a stay-at-home mom, there's nothing wrong with it. That's a job. Dealing with children is a job. To make sure that they are sane citizens <laughs> and make sure that you are sane enough to raise them is honorable. So I love it when I hear a woman, just recently, this is literally just this week, when there were two teachers, now here I am with my little one daughter and my bonus daughter that I call her, and I'm listening to two teachers who are in the room with me saying they have eight children. And I'm like, how are you standing? <laughs> what that is, I mean, I just wanted to bow. You're managing eight children at home, and you're now here in this school with all these other children. Don't you want to run? <laughs> and they're like, but they love children. I love children too. That didn't mean I want to have a hundred of them. It just meant I love to love them and leave. Uh, you know, I love to give them what they get and I'm out. But they are in the trenches every day. Eight children. I mean, that never goes away. That just, that just never goes away. And so I, I have a respect which is what I'm hoping that other women can start to see. If you want a career and you want that career and you chose to delay having children or not have kids, okay, that's, that's what you chose. Mm -hmm.